hope you like my roof. Yeah? Yeah, um, stuff fell down. If you see right here, I used a vacuum cleaner to pull off whatever this foamy stuff is. All right, so I have this connector here today. See it? See how the contacts in there are um, fouled? I'm not getting good contact. This is a blinker light, by the way. Tail light, tail light assembly, or tail light plug. So anyways, you can see in here. <sighs> the discoloration. As you can see, these contacts right here, these dark colored ones, that is rust. You can see it down inside there too. So, Alright, so as you can see, these contacts in here are pretty nasty. I'll show you what one's supposed to look like. Kind of like this. See that color? As opposed to this color? Yeah. This one is rust, corrosion, this one is not. All right, so how you clean these contacts. Just get yourself some isopropyl alcohol. Let's say 91%, yeah, 91%. Some Q-tips. Just push it down in there, like so. Just like that. See. Get on that top contact. Second one. And these four contacts over here.
You want to use the alcohol on here because it will uh, it'll evaporate. Differences. Let's go after this here. See the rest coming off on it. Anyways, all right. So this isn't getting all the rust off, and if you want to get all the rust off, get yourself a container like this. And some cleaning vinegar or white distilled vinegar. Put mine in the bottle. Let's go ahead and see if I can scrape this off with q-tips in the vinegar if not you have to let it sit All right, we are getting more off of there, but not all of it. getting all of it off of there so let's just go ahead and put it in there and submerse it So you want to submerse it in there like this and let it sit. What will happen is this vinegar will eat that rust off of there. Out of the contacts, it'll eat every it'll eat all that rust off of there. I'm gonna let this sit for uh, I don't know the day. I don't know what time it is. And then we'll come back and check it. And what that'll do, that actually will take all that rust out of there. You don't want to leave it on there too long or it'll, um, what do you call it? It will uh, leave an oxide, it'll burn the metal. It'll, it'll make the metal black. Then you'll have to use uh, some sandpaper to get that off of there. Uh, 
lights over here. Alright, well anyways, uh, you want to get these LEDs, the red ones, because these little red LED lights, if your tail light ever goes out, not out, but if your lens cover uh, ever has a discrepancy in it, like a crack or something in it, this is red, always red. And you might not think that this can actually put out a lot of uh, light, but I'm telling you, these are very, very strong LED lights. They will always be red. And we'll come back. All right, and we're back with this uh, light socket, automobile light socket corrosion removal process with the cleaning vinegar you can probably already look in there and see that the terminals are looking a lot nicer than they were I think it's been a couple hours maybe three if I can just kind of uh, let that swirl some of that out of there before I have to start scraping it. Alright, and now you can get a better look at this. I should take this down. Should I take this down? Yeah. I can take these out of the way. That's what the terminals look like now. That's just letting it sit in there. Definitely the outside contacts are shiny. The inside, I might have to let sit a little bit longer. As you can tell, the contacts are now on the outside are clean. The inside, though, are still kind of uh, cruddy, except for this one here in the corner. Alright. So now I'll just take this, these Q-tips. it in the vinegar and see if I can see what comes out. Oh yeah. It's definitely coming out there. Just put it in between the contacts and
fucking lights keep falling out. Okay. Wow. So much shit in there. Still filming? Yeah, still filming. Alright. You know, after we uh, get the majority of this sh stuff out of here, I don't know, we should probably let it sit in there just a little bit longer, just to etch these off. These contacts. So the four contacts there, and he's in the center. I want to let these sit a little bit longer. So I'll do that for the ones in the center. And then we'll come back to it. Shit. Fucking lid at. Oh, it's right here. back and I'm gonna say an hour maybe and I'll check it again. Alright and we're back for our part three of this thing here. And if you can see in there there's some debris that's come off of there. So let's go ahead and clean this up again. Dry it off, clean it up, put it in. this get the q-tips out all 
And once again, all I am is pushing it in between the contacts to get the uh, residual residue out of there. Shit out of there. Fuck. Oop. Get another one. Get that down there, get that down there. Put the shit out on the sides. All right, what do we got? What are we looking like? Let's put some dielectric grease on there. All right, this is supposed to be non-conductive, right? Non-conductive. And let me tell you why it's non-conductive. Let's say you have, say you put a bunch of this dielectric grease or bulb grease on these two contacts in here, right? One's supposed to be hot, one's supposed to be ground, right? Power, negative. Source, negative. Positive, negative, something like that, right? If that grease was conductive, and if you have a bunch of it on here, right, it would make contact between those two terminals, like this. If that grease was electro, electric, if it was conductive, it would arc these two out. That's why it's not conductive. Now people say don't put, um, you know, don't put the grease on the inside of the socket. Well, here's the thing. If you put it around the edge of the bulb, Apparently I didn't do it with this one. All right, if you put it around the edges here, right, that's gonna seal this. When you push it in, it's gonna make a seal around there. If you put it over the terminals, right, there's no way any kind of debris or anything could get in there. Even if you close this off and you don't put a seal here on this or back here, there's still air getting in there. So I see why people, you know, put it on there. Put it on there like this, like that, put it in there. Where the hell I put it? Where? the dielectric grease go? Here. I see why people put this on this and then put it in there, right? If you do that, it's gonna seal up everything on the inside and the out. So if anything, I would just put it on this. I put it right here, I beat around the, this edge, and then I would coat this, the top and the bottom, a thin layer over all that, or a layer. So when you push it in there, that's going to have a completely uh, sealed system. Like, the, even the oxygen inside there, the small amount between the contacts won't exist. I'm going to put it on this stuff too here. I should probably set this outside and let it dry. All right, and I'm back again. I don't know what I was doing. Okay, so uh, let's see. Q tips. Oh, down here. Rubbing alcohol. All right, so down here in these sockets, where these contacts are, I'll clean all this out of here. Clean that up. Clean this one up. That's the outside or inside or whatever. And now I'm gonna clean up the insides here. And here, where these contacts are. And just set that out in the sun for a second, let it cook off. Hit with this, uh, this air. All right, and this bulb, this one has, this one has grease on it already. Okay, this is the one that I want to put in the bottom. This is 33, 3393, and this one is 3373. So 3373 is the bottom, and 3393 is the top. So I need to swap these two here. 
this one here. 3393. So 3373. This is a 3373 is bottom. Alright. That is 3393. Okay, so we'll put that one back in here. And we'll put. Put the dielectric grease right here, right on the bottom. And what we're doing is just making a barrier. So you put it right here along this edge, and when it slides in, it'll push tight. So I'm gonna put some on the bottom too, like that, and over the terminals. And I'll just put it on the whole thing. That way, there will be no air gaps in here. Zero air gap. Sound good? Sounds good. All right, now if this was conductive, these two terminals would arc out, but this is dielectric grease. Die means no electric. So when these go in here, it's actually pushing the, um, the dielectric grease off of here and making contact in here. that and I'm pretty sure if I did this the first time with this grease then I wouldn't be here now we're doing it so let's see um, these are gonna make contact so I'll put some grease on that that in there like that and people will probably say you don't need to do it this way but let me tell you what if all the oxygen is completely smothered out or atmosphere from that right then no electrical contact or no corrosion should it no corrosion should happen and if this has a seal around the outside then no water should be able to enter Uh, so, there we go. If anything, I probably, you probably don't want uh, stuff that's exposed to the environment or the grease to be completely exposed to the environment, like not gobs of it, because, you know, sand, sand will stick to this shit. Okay. So if we want to do anything, maybe just a light coat like that. And these little, I understand that these little cotton filth things will probably conduct electricity, but you know, if they do, they'll, probably, they'll just burn out. Anyways, uh, so that was 3373 goes on the bottom. That's the tail end blinker. Oh wait, that's top. Whoops. All right, let's pull that out. Shit, now I gotta reapply it. Reapply around the outside. This is like a silicone caulking and uh, what do you call it? Liquid tape. Could probably just liquid tape this part down here. Except for the contacts, of course.
pack it tight. And put it in the bottom. Alright, put the numbers, I guess, facing up. I don't think it matters, honestly. Alright. There we go, see? Now it's out around this edge here. It has a nice little seal. So, clean up the excess. Put that in there, put that in there. Okay, we'll call that good. Let's see if it actually works still with all that shit on there. Uh, it should. All right, that worked. Uh, that works. So I'm gonna put this other one in there and do the same thing, but with this top section here. I'll have to get in behind these contacts because uh, we did have corrosion on that other one. On the lower, on the lower, uh, on the lower one. Alright. Alright, that should be good. Uh, I don't think anything's going to get into this one. Oh, let's put the number towards the top. This is 3393. This is probably excessive, but you know, I just want to get it done on the edges there on the outside and this side over here. Like that. The number is facing up. The electric grease around the outside perimeter. Top, bottom. That should be good. I'm gonna put these in and do the same with the other side. Peace. All right, so here I am, and this is one of my tail light assemblies. Backup light, tail light. On the back here, it says three. 3473, no, 3373, 3373, and up here says 3493, 93 goes up top, 73 goes on bottom, numbers facing up. So I ran out of dielectric grease earlier, and what I'm going to do is pack this stuff here. Permatex bulb grease dielectric is what you're looking for. I'm going to pack it around here, around these terminals in here. So the they people say, you know, don't put that around there, just put it around here like a seal. Let me tell you something. Uh, if this is dielectric grease, then putting the grease from here to here over these two terminals is not going to arc it out. What I'm, why I'm doing that is think of this as like an electric, uh, an electrode when you're welding, right? If this is completely encased, this is completely encased in this shielding, this uh, dielectric grease, then there's no way when the electricity passes through here in the contacts, 
there's no it's an absolutely sealed uh, environment and people will tell you don't pack it in there just put it around here to make a seal let me tell you something you want that shielding to sit right on top of that that weld right so you can do that with this here completely encase it and it'll make a complete seal self-explanatory just like anything else puncture the top with the cap Set it around here in this channel. Like so. What I'm doing is packing it in here and getting it behind the, because uh, remember, when you push this down, it's gonna fill. When you push this in to the casing, it's going to pack that tight. Alright, so what I'm going to do here is break that off, that stem. And pack it down into this. I'm gonna push it underneath the electrodes though, the electrical connectors. All right, because if it's all packed in, then nothing can get behind it. And no corrosion will set in. sure I put it on this bulb already but if I didn't just put some over there close it in now remember everybody says that this stuff is uh, non electrical conducting right there so now we have a seal right there and we have a seal right here outside top Put the numbers towards the top push it in and you can see there's a seal outside here I don't know if it made it all the way to here let's go ahead and fill that one in anyways
this off. All right, so that one's in. Like that. No moisture should be able to get in there. Well, let's do the next one. If you look here, you can see there is, uh, there's already dielectric on there. Right there. Now we're just gonna fill this in and pack it in behind these contacts too. Right here. Because so we wanna seal off as, all of the, we wanna seal the atmosphere from these contacts. And what happens is when you push this in, like this, it scrapes the contacts and makes a, an electrical connection. But remember, all that other dielectric is going to be around it, so it'll be as secure as possible. I did run this in... Where did I run this in? I ran this in Colorado over this season for winter. Now there's contacts right there, right? And here's the edge. And see how there's a gap right there? Go ahead and pack that in with some dielectric. Some of this, uh, this grease here. That's hard to get. All right. Nice, amazing blob, doesn't it? Looks great, except for right there. Missing some. Right there. So I just go like this bottom numbers towards the top. Alright, go, it's in there. Alright. So it's around the same on the outside. Seamed up, seamed up. I think the only reason why you don't want to put a shit ton on here is because dust particulates will stick to this. All right. And these contacts in here look fine. Just wipe this out with a Q-tip. You don't need to put the dielectric in here because this has a on the other fitting that connects on here. It has a gasket that fits, pushes in there. All right. That's it, that's what it looks like. Go ahead and put that in now.
can see the rubber gasket right there inside here. See it? That push fits into the connection. Anyways, uh, I take these clips off because they dry rot anyways and it makes it harder to remove the connector. Inside the connector, you can see it looks clean. We'll just go ahead and push this on and it will be secured inside of this housing. So we don't need the clip on there anyways. If you feel like you need to secure this, just push this on like this, flush to the base. And um, well, I guess you can't do anything about it. You could put a little bit of the dielectric on, on the base side right there so it'll hold tight, but that is definitely tight. And once we put it in here and mount it, it's not going anywhere. in all these are these little push pins like this all plastic so they push into the hole like so and then you push the plug in and it expand it locks these pins in so it's a non screw type situation all right now it's in i'm gonna go ahead and turn the lights on and see if it works see it is working it is producing a red light and the red light reflects off of this I do have some wear spots going on here so I will probably get chrome paint and then repaint this chrome so they reflect it so it stays reflective anyways if you're wondering about leaving these out in the elements I can assure you that I have had this completely encased with snow on the back and they still work perfectly fine. However, I didn't have the dielectric on it, so the other side had a corrosion issue before I even had this because this had, when the lens was on here, it retained moisture behind the lens cover and it corroded this, corroded the socket. But as we did earlier, we put the what do you call it? We put the uh, clean connectors with cleaning vinegar. That's how I did that. But um, they corroded again, so we, or well, whenever I started this journey. So now that the dielectric's on there, it's making contact and working again. I'm gonna go ahead and test the brake lights. I'm guessing that brake light worked. I'm gonna set the camera over here and test this brake light now. The running lights work. So I'm gonna call this project complete and we're good to go. Now leaving these exposed outside like this actually allows it to dry out. All right, peace.